Oh, yeah. Welcome everyone to the maths class. Uh, from the last two classes, uh, we are studying linear algebra. Uh, we understood the basic concept of uh, matrix, different types of matrix, determinants, inverse, rank of the matrix. And uh, we also studied solution of system of linear equation, which are of homogeneous and non-homogeneous type. In the today's session, uh, we will. Uh, our target is to complete <coughs> eigenvector, eigenvalues, and eigenvectors uh, topic and uh, Cayley Hamilton's theorem. Okay. Um, as I said in the yesterday's class, uh, this topic has a good advantage in um, dynamic analysis of the systems in order to calculate natural frequencies and mode shifts. Okay. Um, so. If a, if a matrix A is given, then the calculation of eigenvalues and in order to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we first have to understand what is characteristics matrix and uh, what is characteristics equation. Okay, the matrix um, A minus lambda times identity matrix is called as characteristics matrix. Write down. A matrix A minus lambda times identity matrix is uh, called as characteristics matrix. So how it will look like matrix A is let's say three cross three A one one A one two A one three B uh, A two one A two two A two three A three one A three two A three three minus lambda times identity matrix, which is again three cross three. So what you will gonna get A one one minus lambda A one two A one three as it is. A21 as it is, A22 minus lambda, A23 as it is, A31, A32 as it is, A33 minus lambda. Okay, so you will clearly see in the diagonal terms of the matrix, you are going to get uh, a subtraction of lambda. And if you take a determinant of this matrix, that is A minus lambda, if you take a determinant of it and equate it to zero, the overall equation which you will get is called as a characteristics equation. Okay. So in short, if I take a determinant of this matrix, that is a11 minus lambda, so on, take a determinant equal equal it to zero, you will gonna get an equation in terms of lambda, because all other terms a11, a12, a13, a21, so on, are constants. So only variable here is lambda, right? So as it is a three cross three matrix, you will get an equation of order three. So third order equation you will get. So if it is a second order equation, the roots of the equations are two. If it is third order equation, we'll get three roots. If it is a fourth order equation, we'll get four roots. So depending on the size of the matrix, the same number of eigenvalues will get. So it's a three cross three matrix. You can expect three roots, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. They can be identical. Uh, they may be identical. They may not be identical. Okay, we don't know. Depending on the cases, but uh, the overall idea is whatever is the size of the matrix, okay, uh, if it is n cross n, then n number of eigenvalues, uh, n number of um, roots you will get for lambda. And this lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 is nothing but the eigenvalues, okay. These are the eigenvalues of this matrix, okay. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So, first of all, you have to create the characteristics equation and uh, solve it in order to get the eigenvalues. Okay, so I have not I have not written here characteristics equation, but you know, like if you take a determinant, you will gonna end up with some equation. Okay, we'll see in some questions in upcoming slides. Uh, but in short, if we get an equation, let's say lambda q, say a one something let's say a1 capital a1 something like this okay a1 lambda cube plus a2 lambda square plus a3 lambda plus a4 equal to zero something this kind of equation will get which is third order equation and the roots are lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 okay a capital a1 capital a2 a3 a4 are some constant terms which are positive which Maybe positive, maybe negative. We don't know, depending on the cases. 
but this is a general format of equation how it will look like it it may be zero it may not be zero okay so now uh, what is eigen vector how can we calculate the eigen vector corresponding to these eigen values okay so as you know let's say for us if you take any um, system let's say it will have uh, you are calculating first natural frequency, second natural frequency, third natural frequency of that system. Depending on its mode shape will also change that let's say uh, first mode, second mode and third mode. So similarly, same concept is you can like that came from mathematics that if we have each eigenvalue corresponding to each eigenvalue, you have an eigenvector. So if we have a three eigenvalues, you will have three eigenvectors. One will be corresponding to lambda one, other will be corresponding to lambda two and third one will be the corresponding to lambda 3 okay so how to calculate the eigenvectors that is main question now let me go to the next slide yeah yeah uh, uh, can i go to the next slide is it um, have you written the things on the first slide okay coming to the second slide let capital X be a non-zero vector and it is satisfying the condition A minus lambda I, which is characteristics matrix into X equal to zero. Then that X is called as the eigenvalue of the lambda. Okay. I hope you are getting. So corresponding to each one, each eigenvalue, let's say if you put here lambda one, so a minus lambda one i into x equal to zero, then that x will be you have to call it as x one. That will be your eigenvalue, eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda one. Okay, x one is eigenvector corresponding to uh, lambda one eigenvalue. So if you now take lambda two, then you will get another eigenvector x two. So you have to say x two is eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 2 and if you take a lambda 3 you will get third eigenvector x3 and that eigenvector is corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 3 are you following it so in general i can say a minus lambda x times x will if it gives you zero then that x is called as eigenvector okay so if it is it is three cross three matrix, x is three cross one matrix, and you will end up with a three cross one matrix. You know where all terms are zero zero zero. Okay, so if you multiply this x inside, what what will get? A x equal to lambda x, right? You will get it if you multiply x inside. A multiply x minus lambda times i into x. So what should be the size of the x? As you can see, a is 3 cross 3 in our example. x is 3 cross 1. Lambda is a constant. And x is again 3 cross 1. So ultimately, the size of the x is 3 cross 1. So this 3 cross 1, 3 cross 1 matches. Okay. So just to um, revise once again. How to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors? First of all, you have to create a characteristics equation. A minus lambda I determinant equal to zero. You will get uh, the eigenvalues. And corresponding to each eigenvalue, you will get eigenvector by the equation A minus lambda I times X equal to zero. Okay. Okay, let me just give you some simple question first. Uh, I'll to explain you the procedure how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Write down this first question. Um, A is equal to five four one two. Okay, A is equal to five four one two. So. As I said, uh, A minus lambda matrix, how it will look like? 
that is 5 minus lambda 4 1 and 2 minus lambda as I said only you have to subtract the um, lambda from the principal diagonal element so 5 minus lambda and 2 minus lambda okay this is how your characteristics matrix will look like if you take a determinant of it and equate it to 0 this is your characteristics equation characteristics equation okay this is your characteristics equation so uh, what is the determinant of this matrix 5 minus lambda into 2 minus lambda minus 4 equal to 0 so this is your characteristics equation if you simplify it you will gonna end up with this so as I said it's a 2 cross 2 matrix it's a second order equation lambda square right so if it is second order equation you will get two values of lambda so if you simply solve this equation you'll end up with a lambda is equal to 1 and lambda is equal to 6 are you following it Now corresponding to each value of lambda, so well, lambda is equal to 1 and lambda equal to 6. So you can call them as lambda 1 and lambda 2. Corresponding to each value of lambda, you will get an eigenvector. And how you will get a minus lambda times x equal to 0. So let's take uh, lambda is equal to 1 now for, for example. If lambda is equal to 1, um, what was your matrix A? Matrix A is 5, 4, 1, 2. A minus lambda will be 5 minus 1, 4, 1, and 2 minus 1, again 1. So this is how this is your A minus lambda 1 times I matrix will look like. Okay, A minus lambda I into, this is your capital X1 matrix, corresponding to eigenvalue uh lambda one the first uh, eigenvector is um, capital x1 okay let's say uh, x1 and x2 are the elements of that um, eigenvector so simplify this equation so for what you will get if you solve this equation 4x1 plus 4x2 equal to 0 in short you will get x1 plus x2 equal to 0 if we either take first row or second row same equation you are going to get so what do you mean by this x1 equal to minus x2 so depending on the value of x2 let's say x2 is 1 x1 will be minus 1 let's say in general x2 is k then x1 is minus k okay so these are the eigen so either you can write this okay um yep or this both are correct this is the general way of writing and this is more specific way of writing okay so similarly corresponding to lambda is equal to six a minus lambda I times x will be a is five four one two and lambda is 6 so 5 minus 6 and 2 minus 6 you have to write 5 minus 6 is minus 1 2 minus 6 is minus 4 the rest of the terms are as it is so if you're gonna if you solve it what will end up with minus x1 plus 4x2 equal to 0 so basically x1 equal to 4x2 you will get either you will take first equation or second equation you are gonna get same equation that is x1 equal to 4x2 okay now uh, depending on the value of x2 if x2 is 1 then x1 is 4 okay so this is a general specific way of writing it general way would be if x2 is equal to k x1 will be 4k k can be anything 1 2 3 4 5 so on okay is it clear any doubt Till this <clears throat> will you be able to solve some questions on it if I give you yes okay so before we jump on some more questions I would like to give some notes to you and then 
will solve uh, some questions okay so write down this uh, notes properties of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors write down heading properties of the eigenvalues and eigenvector so very um, important points okay uh, these points will help you to solve the problems quickly okay so be focused first property sum of the eigenvalues equal to the trace of the matrix just now we have seen an example 5 4 1 2 right what is what are the eigenvalues which we got 1 and 6 correct what is the trace of the matrix can you tell me what is the trace of this matrix here 7 trace means sum of the elements of the principal diagonal 5 plus 2 and the sum of the eigenvalues is also 7 so it's proved sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix product of eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix can you tell me the determinant of this matrix here what is the determinant of the matrix here 10 minus 4 6 right and the product of eigenvalues is also 6 1 into 6 is 6 okay yes root so product of eigenvalues is also equal to is equal to the determinant of the matrix so these two points will help you a lot in solving like questions um if you uh, if options are given just by looking into the option you can take it rather than okay, creating the um, let's say characteristics equation then uh, solving that characteristics equation and uh, getting the eigenvalues okay if you know these properties that sum of the eigenvalues equal to the trace and the product of eigenvalues equal to determinant you can easily um, um, cancel out the options which will not work okay and you may end up with directly and you can directly select answer or in worst case you may solve it okay but uh, of course this is very useful in um, solving the problems okay quickly eigenvalues of the diagonal matrix third property i'm telling eigenvalue of the diagonal matrix scalar matrix lower triangular matrix upper triangular matrix are along the principal diagonal okay very important take any matrix which is either of this form diagonal matrix scalar matrix lower triangular matrix or upper triangular matrix um, eigenvalues are along the principal diagonal let me give you an example 1 2 3 0 0 0 what is our way to calculate the eigenvalues can you tell me a minus lambda equal to 0 right this is our a so you take what you do a minus lambda equal to 0 determinant of it so determinant of 1 minus lambda 0 0 0 2 minus lambda 0 0 0 3 minus lambda okay this is our diagonal matrix right so if you take a determinant what you will gonna end up with 1 minus lambda triangles are upper triangular matrix ultimately what will happen is uh, you will end up the um, eigenvalues which are along the principal diagonal okay <clears throat> just a minute um, looks like my screen share got ended i'll share again Just a minute.
okay is it clear the point number 3 anyone have any doubt in this the next point is point number 4 if a is a singular matrix then one of the eigen values is zero okay it's pretty clear because what we said in the point number 2 determinant of the matrix equal to the product of the eigen values do you agree so if determinant is zero means matrix is singular then of course one of the eigen values is should be uh, zero right because product of eigen values is determinant if determinant is zero means product of eigen values has to be zero it means at least one of the eigen values has to be zero right so that's how uh, we have written this point that is if a is singular matrix then one of its eigen values is, is zero and if a is non singular matrix then none of the eigen values is zero because your determinant is not equal to zero in that case so product of an eigen values should not be equal to zero i hope you understood the per four the last point point number 5 um if a plus ib is eigen value then a minus ib is also an eigen value because they are complex conjugates okay so generally when we calculate the root a plus or minus and root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a i'll tell you what we'll end up with um, if it is a complex root a plus or minus ib right so hence a plus ib is a root then a minus ib is also root of that equation hence we can say a plus ib is eigen value then a minus ib is also an eigen value is it clear can i proceed to the next slide yeah i think we have one more uh, property or the relationship and then we will uh, solve some questions can i proceed to the next slide hello this one this is an important slide in the point number 6 uh in order to calculate the eigen vector the what equation i told you is a minus lambda a times x equal to sorry a minus lambda a times x equal to 0 right this is the equation i told you so if multiply x inside what will end up with ax equal to lambda x so in this both if you look into this equation x is common on both the sides so what you can compare is you can compare a is behave in a similar way as that of lambda okay because x is a eigen vector which is common on both the sides so a and lambda are more or less proportional to each other you can say okay so now if i multiply a with a k some constant k then uh, the eigen value of that matrix k will also automatically will change to k times lambda okay if eigen value of matrix a is lambda then eigen values of a square is lambda square if you perform some operation a plus or minus k then lambda will also change accordingly plus or minus k okay if eigen values of a is lambda then eigen value of a inverse is lambda inverse so one upon a or in short the a inverse eigen value of a inverse is eigen value of a inverse is one upon lambda okay what is a inverse a inverse is equal to adjoint of a divided by determinant of a okay so i can write adjoint of a divided by determinant of a equal to or sorry uh, not equal to eigen value of adjoint of a divided by determinant of a which means eigen values of a inverse is 1 upon lambda okay we can write this step and uh, if i take determinant on the right hand side what we can write is um yeah 
what we can write is adjoint of E or eigenvalue of adjoint of E is determinant of E divided by lambda. Okay, so this is also one good relation you can write out, out of it. Okay, so write down these points. So I think uh, we have studied enough theoretical part now and I have given a glimpse of how questions will look. So I hope you are ready for um, questions which you can solve on your own. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll give some questions and uh, give you some time to solve it. I hope you will be able to solve it. Can I go to the next slide? Hello. Yes. Okay. Let's take question. Minus four, two, four, three. Eigen vector of A is options A, B, C, and D. Three, two, four, five. Minus one, one minus two. Okay, solve this question and tell me the answer. I'll give you two minutes. Can you tell me which option is correct here? Options are 3, 2, 4, 5, 2 minus 1, 4 minus 2. Yeah, correct. Two minus one is the correct answer, Arjun. Hmm. Let me uh, solve it now for others. <coughs> yeah. There are two ways to solve it. Okay, one is you know that a minus lambda i time x equal to zero is a vector, is the equation which you can use. So in short, a x equal to lambda x. You know. Okay. So uh first one is the trial and error method what you have to do is let's say take a matrix which is minus four two four three okay and take matrix x any one of this okay one two three four so for example if i take option c two minus one equal to 
it should come as lambda times x lambda means it should come as some value multiply by x okay so let's check whether it's happening or not minus 4 into 2 uh minus 8 plus 2 into minus 1 minus 2 which is minus 10 you will get okay uh, then 4 into 2 is 8 minus 3 into 2 sorry 3 into 1 is minus 3 into minus 1 is minus 3 which is 5 okay and then you can take 5 common here and you can basically write 2 and minus 1 so if you take minus 5 common here you will get 2 and minus 1 so in short a times x equal to lambda times x okay so this is satisfying the criteria okay so we can say that um the option c is correct if you take of any other option option a b d you may not be able to take um, convert um this kind of uh, a relationship or it it will not be satisfying this kind of relationship that is ax equal to lambda x so this is one way of solving the problem trial and error method try with option a b c i have directly taken option c you can try with option a b c so let's try first with a you may not end up with okay so it's a minus four two four three option a is three and two so if you multiply with what will happen minus 12 plus 4 and then 12 plus 6 so that's what you will get so it is minus 8 in the top and down 12 plus 6 is 18 so you cannot uh, write it as lambda 1 times you cannot write it as lambda 1 times uh, 2 comma minus 1 right this is not possible is this is not an eigenvalue you can similarly try for others and come up with a correct answer um, by trial and error method so this is one way of solving the problem other way of solving the problem is follow the procedure so follow the procedure means calculate the value of lambda and then calculate the value of eigen vectors so what was our matrix minus four two three sorry four and three this is our matrix here, right? So A minus lambda I determinant equal to 0 is our characteristic equation. So what you can do is minus 4 minus lambda 2, 4 and 3 minus lambda determinant equal to 0. This is our characteristic equation. Let's see how it will look like minus 4 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus 8 equal to 0. So if you further solve it, what will happen? Minus 12 plus 4 lambda minus 3 lambda plus lambda square correct minus 12 plus 4 lambda minus 3 lambda plus lambda square minus 8 equal to 0 so in short lambda square plus lambda minus 4 equal to 0 right So let me check if it's correct or not. Minus 12 plus 4 lambda minus 3 lambda plus lambda square minus 20. Yes, minus 20, right? Okay, equal to 0. Now, um, solve this equation, uh, you will get two different roots. So, um, 5u minus 5u and 4u may get correct just check it right can you write it like this um or are there any other roots what are the roots you are getting 5 and minus 4 or minus 5 and 4 just check it Y and minus four, right? Yeah. Um, lambda square 
plus 5 lambda minus 4 lambda minus 20 equal to 0. So from this, if I take lambda uh, common, it is lambda plus 4. And uh, if I take minus 4 common, it's lambda plus 5 equal to 0. So lambda plus 5 and lambda minus 4 equal to 0. This means lambda is equal to minus 5 and 4. Okay. And then corresponding to uh, minus 5 and 4, you have to calculate the eigenvectors. And as you can see, um, this is minus 5 we have got here, means option C is correct. Okay. Um, so if you choose uh, eigenvalue minus 5 corresponding to that, you can find the eigenvector by using then again traditional method a minus lambda times x equal to 0. So what is a minus lambda minus 4 minus 5 right 2 as it is 4 as it is 3 minus 5 into x x1 x2 equal to 0 correct so by this method also you can solve a minus lambda times x equal to 0 lambda thing we are considering as minus 5 so minus minus will become plus here a minus lambda we are doing right here also it will become plus yeah so what we'll end up with 1 2 4 and 8 x1 x2 equal to 0 0 so basically x1 plus 2 x2 equal to 0 x1 is equal to minus 2 x2 okay so if uh, x2 is equal to minus 1 then x1 is equal to plus 2 do you agree so that's why 2 comma minus 2 and minus 1 is an eigenvector so in this way also you can choose the correct option okay whichever you feel easy you can follow that method uh, i feel like trial and error method is better in this case especially when they ask you eigenvector but if it is a link question like eigenvalue eigenvector then better you use a traditional method okay even if they ask you eigenvalue you have to any anyway solve it okay but if they directly ask you eigenvector trial and error method is comparatively faster because you don't have to calculate eigenvalues okay but both the methods are fine you I, as i have shown you we can solve by any way whichever you feel easy you can use it any doubt in this question is it clear to you yeah feel free to ask if you have any questions Okay, if no doubt, then I'll give you one homework question, which you can try on your own later. Mm. You here. 3 minus 2, 2, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Find the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue minus 2. Okay. They are already given. Find the eigenvector find the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is equal to minus 2 okay answer for this question I'll give you directly 2 5 and 0 you have to match your answer okay 2, 5, and 0 is the answer. So, mm, solve it, you should get this answer. Okay, 3 minus 2, 2, 0 minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 1 is your vector. Sorry, matrix. Okay, um, Let me give you some more, uh, one other question. Mm. If the eigenvalues of A E 
r 1,2,3 then trace of a square minus at joint of a plus a inverse equal to okay solve this question okay there's a little bit different Solve this question. Anyone got the answer? So, okay, then I'll help you with this question. Mm. So, what is trace of a square? Trace means what? Trace means sum of elements of principal diagonal. And sum of the elements of the principal uh, diagonal is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues, right? Because trace of the matrix is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues. So, that concept you are using here in order to solve this question. So I can write trace of a square minus at joint of a plus a inverse as trace of a square minus trace of at joint of a plus trace of a inverse. Right. So eigenvalues are one, two, three. Eigenvalues of a. What they have given eigenvalues of E are 1, 2, 3. What is the determinant of the matrix? Multiplication of the eigenvalues is the determinant of matrix. So it is 6. Can you tell me the trace of A? Uh, can you tell me the eigenvalues of A inverse? 1 by 1, comma, 1 by 2, comma, 1 by 3. So basically 1, comma, 1 by 2, comma, 1 by 3 are the eigenvalues of A inverse. What are the eigenvalues of A square? Lambda square that is 1 comma 4 comma 6 and what are the eigenvalues of adjoint of a adjoint of eigenvalues is determinant of a divided by um, Lambda so basically 6 by 1 6 by 2 and 6 by 3 in short 6 comma 3 comma 2 Is it clear till this? How I have written the eigenvalues of A inverse, eigenvalues of A square, and eigenvalue of adjoint of A. And trace means sum of the eigenvalues. So I can write trace of A square is 1 plus 4 plus 6 minus trace of adjoint of A is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 2. And trace of A inverse is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. Right? So solve this equation. So four plus 
6 plus 1 is 11 minus 6 5 okay so basically this will get cancelled out okay so no i think this is a square is 9 here so uh, 14 minus 11 is um, 11 right yeah is 3 3 plus 1 is 4 so 4 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 which is 29 by 6 yeah everyone is getting the same answer so in this question you have to use the concept like the properties which i have given to you um, in the previous slides okay how to calculate the eigenvalues of a inverse how to calculate the determinant from the eigenvalues how to calculate the eigenvalues of adjoint of a and the inverse and a square so if you know you know that uh, you will be able to solve it okay and you should know what is the relationship between trace of a matrix and the eigenvalues so if all these things consolidatedly we are using in this question can i proceed to the next slide okay one more question i'll give then we'll start another point which is cali hamilton's theorem okay take this question a matrix A, which is n cross n, such that E of i j equal to i for i equal to j, and A i a of i j equal to zero for i is not equal to j. Okay. What is sum of eigenvalues? Okay, solve this question. Six, sir. No. Um. Yes, Arjun. Correct. N into n plus one divided by two. Because how your matrix A will look like? One, zero, 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 two, zero, 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 zero. So this is how your n cross n matrix look like. Uh, yeah. So what is the sum of the eigenvalues? Sum of the eigenvalues is the trace of the matrix. Trace means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on till n. And sum of n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. OK? So A, a matrix which is n cross n in which e of i j equal to i and uh, if i is equal to j otherwise it's zero it means it's a diagonal matrix and diagonal terms are one two three four so on till n so trace will be some of that natural numbers you'll end up with the n into n plus one divided by two okay is it clear Let me give you uh, that start another point, which is Cali Hamilton's theorem. Write down heading Cali Hamilton's theorem. I hope by this time you know the concept of characteristics equation. Okay, you know the meaning of characteristics equation. So, what is Cali Hamilton's theorem? Cali Hamilton's theorem states that every square matrix of order n satisfies its own characteristics equation repeat every square matrix of order n satisfy its own characteristics equation okay so if we have a matrix a let's say um, uh, as shown in this um, slide 5412 is the characteristics equation sorry 5412 are the terms in the matrix 
So the characteristic equation will look like as five minus lambda four one and two minus lambda determinant of it equal to zero. So this is your characteristic equation. You simplify it, it will look like as equation number one. So what is equation number one? Lambda square minus seven lambda plus six equal to zero. Okay. So this is your characteristics equation of the matrix. Then according to the Cali Hamilton's theorem, what we can say that every matrix or every square matrix satisfy its own characteristics equation. So you can replace lambda with a in short. So lambda square minus seven lambda plus six equal to zero. You can write it as a square minus seven a plus six times identity matrix equal to zero. Are you following it? Every square matrix that is five its own characteristics equation. Okay. Um, so whatever characteristics equation is there, you can replace lambda with a. That is what they are saying in short. Is it clear to you? Hello. Can you tell me what is use of it? What is use of this uh, um, Kali Hamilton's theorem? How this will helpful for you? Think on it. The non trivial solution, sir. Um, no, I, I, um, I don't think so. But, sir, by what, using yeah. Ali A. Hamid's theorem, we can find the higher powers. And... Yes, correct. Good point. Yeah, so using Kali Hamilton's theorem, we can calculate higher powers of A, either in positive side or negative side. Like, you can, you know, like using Kali Hamilton's theorem, you have solved inverse in previously. Um, if you remember the question which I have given you, a matrix A is given and some characteristics equation is given and they have asked you to calculate A inverse. What you did, you multiplied A inverse on both the sides and calculated the inverse, right? So using the Kelly Hamilton theorem, you cannot just um, get A inverse or A second power of A. You can get the higher powers of A also. You can calculate A cube, A raised to the power 4, A raised to the power 5. You can also get the negative powers of A, like A inverse, A raised to the power minus 2, A raised to the power minus 3, and so on. So these are the um, basically um, uses of it. So this is our um, characteristics equation. Okay, I'll write in on the next slide again A square minus 7A plus 6i equal to 0. Okay, give me a minute. A square minus 7a plus 6i equal to 0. Okay. So what is a square from this? 7 times a minus 6 times i. Correct. So you got a square. It is pretty easy to solve. What is a cube? 7a square minus 6a. Right. If you multiply a on the both the sides. A square is known. We can put it here and get the value of a cube. Similarly, you can calculate fourth power that is 7a cube minus 6a square and so on. So in short, what you can get do is uh, you can calculate the positive powers of a. Similarly, you can get the negative powers of a. What was our characteristics equation? A square minus 7a plus 6i equal to zero okay multiply with the inverse on both the sides so what will happen if you multiply with the inverse on both the sides um, a minus 7i plus 6a inverse equal to um, zero so from this a inverse i can write it as one upon six into 7i minus a okay this is your a inverse you can also calculate a raised to the power minus 2 which is 1 upon 6 7a inverse minus i you can also write a raised to the power minus 3 
is equal to 1 upon 6 7 a raised to the power minus 2 minus a inverse and so on so these are the negative powers of a so in short um, the Cali Hamilton theorem will help us uh, to get the higher powers of a okay not in the positive side but also in the negative side okay so let me give you one question based on this Uh, let me have a new slide. Yeah. Take a question. A matrix A, which is minus 5, minus 3, 2, and 0. Find a cube. okay so there are two questions in this let's say find characteristics equation and then find a cube okay let's suppose this is a link question uh, find characteristics equation and a cube So solve it and um, tell me the answer. How the characteristics equation will look like here? Minus five minus lambda, minus three, two, and zero minus lambda. Determinant of it equal to zero, right? So it is uh, minus five minus lambda into minus lambda plus 6 equal to 0 so it is uh, lambda square plus 5 lambda plus 6 equal to 0 this is your characteristics equation according to the Cali Hamilton's theorem you can write a square plus 5a plus 6 equal to 0 so a square is equal to minus 6i sorry minus 5a minus 6i okay what is a cube minus 5a square minus 6a but a square is what a square is this equation number two so put this equation number two into this up next equation so what we're gonna get is a cube is equal to minus five what is a square minus five a minus six i minus six a so it is minus 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 plus 25 a plus 30 i minus six a so 25 minus six a is 19a plus 30i is your a cube that's all you can easily get the answer so what is your a by you minus 5 minus 3 2 0 multiply with 19 <coughs> plus 30 into i that is 1001 so you will end up with the answer Nineteen a plus thirty a. Yes, correct, Arjun. Um, the final answer is here minus sixty five, minus fifty seven, thirty eight, and thirty. Okay, this is your a cube.
ओके इज इट क्लियर Let me give you another question. Can I proceed to the next slide? Hello. Can I proceed to the next slide? Take this another question. You've got a matrix A. Um, which will look like as one zero zero one zero minus one zero minus one zero zero I I And then zero 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 minus i. Okay, solve this. Find a. Sorry, find. Question is find. A to the power four. Okay, A is given. You have to find A raised to the power four. If you solve it by traditional method like uh, A square, then A cube, and A raised to the power four, or calculating A square and multiplying them, I feel it's time consuming. Okay, so try to use the approach of. Uh, um, Kelly Hamilton's theorem and uh, solve this question. I'll give you two minutes to solve. Let me know the answer. Yes, Arjun, I is the correct answer. Yeah, I will help you for others. Um, what is the characteristics equation? You can clearly see here. This is upper triangular matrix. Uh, in a current upper triangular matrix, uh, eigenvalues are along the principal diagonal itself. So even if you try the characteristics equation, it will look like this: lambda minus one, lambda plus one, lambda minus i. Lambda plus i equal to zero. A minus b a plus b is a square minus b square. So lambda square minus one. And here again, a minus b a plus b it's a lambda square minus i square. And what is i square? I square is equal to minus one. So it will become plus one. And again here, a square a minus b um, a plus b. What you can write is a minus b, a plus b is a square minus b square. So lambda raised to the power four minus one, you will get. Okay, equal to zero. So according to the Cali Hamilton theorem, what we can say is every uh, square matrix satisfies its own characteristics equation. So I can write it as a raised to the power four minus i equal to zero. This implies a raised to the power four equal to i. That's all. It's very simple. Is it clear till this?
this completes your first chapter uh, linear algebra i hope uh, you understood it um, from the beginning of uh, basic concepts of matrix determinants inverse rank of the matrix solution of system of linear equation eigen values eigen vectors and the cali hamilton theorem if you have any doubt till this feel free to ask uh, we can spend some time if you have any doubt if no doubt then um, i would like to start a new topic here which is calculus okay Can we start new topic now? Is this clear to you till this? Hello? <coughs> Hello? Is it clear? Yeah, okay. Let me open new uh, presentation. Okay, so uh, now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to start a new chapter, which is basic calculus. Okay. Um, in this chapter, uh, this is a very big topic. Okay. Um, you can clearly see how many points are there. Limits, continuity, differentiability, mean value theorem definite indefinite integrals partial and total derivation uh, maxima and minima and multiple integrals in multiple it's double and triple integrals uh, in today's session our focus will be only on limits okay because um, it's good to understand first basic things then you can leverage that understanding to um, clarify the other topics such as um, continuity and differentiability and so on okay so understanding of limit is very important what is limit like uh, when we say limit extends to something what is the meaning of it in reality okay um, that you should know and how it will help us in defining the continuity of the function and differentiability of function is, is also equally important okay so the first topic uh, the mainly the continuity and differentiability depends on the limit concept which we'll study today and in the next session um, we will focus on the mean value theorems and so on okay um, so it's a basic calculus con consists of uh, differential differential and integral calculus okay and these are the six points on which our focus will be this maxima and minima topic as you can see which is second that is also depend on the differentiation so if you, if a function is given to you which is in either in a one variable or two variable problem right uh, in those cases how can we find the maximum or the minimum value of the function and at what point you will get the maximum and minimum value of the function that is how uh, that is what uh, we will be studying in that topic number five maxima and minima okay so as you can see we are we have to study partial derivative also here what does it mean it means that um, we are not only limited to the single variable uh, functions uh, we will move towards the two variable problems or three variable problems also and at then our uh, focus will be on multiple integrals as single integrals will study indefinite indefinite but when it comes to double integral and triple integral use of it to calculate the area and volume uh, we will study in the last topic, which is multiple integrals. So in short, it's a very huge topic and um, have a patience um, while studying this. And uh, in today's session, uh, we will limit our focus to the limits topic, okay? So with this introduction, um, let's start understanding these concepts, limits. I'll, can I go to the next slide?
first uh, definition is um, write down the definition a function f of x is said to have limit l as x approaches a okay. uh, whenever we say x approaches a we are showing it with the arrow okay. we are let me use the laser pointer here like this arrow we are using in order to um, signify that x approaches a Okay, so whenever I say like limit extends to a f of x um, and uh, if you get the value is l then we will say that a function f of x have the limit l as x approaches a. Okay, uh, so if the value of that limit approaches l then we will say like this. Okay, so this is how we will calculate the limit. Uh, how it is significant and all we'll study in upcoming slide. Another thing you should know is test of existence of limit, whether the limit exists or not. Okay. Uh, wh what is the meaning of the sentence test of existence of limit? Test of existence of limit means a function f of x, whether it is exists or not at point x is equal to a. Okay, that is what we will study. Okay. <clears throat> limit, if you are calculating the limit from the left hand side, so x you are approaching, so let's say, let me explain you through some simple figure suppose uh, at this is your point of interest a you are if you are approaching and the a from the negative side so x tends to a from the negative side or if you approach the a from the positive side x tends to a from the positive side like this you can write okay so this is left hand limit and right hand limit if both of them are same then you can say limit exists or function exists at point x is equal to a clear yeah. let's study some practical uh, questions on it to gain more understanding on it okay let me uh, show you one figure okay then things will be more clear Let's study this theoretical background. I have given a function to you which is g of x. The value of the function g of x is equal to x square when x is not equal to 2 and the value of function is 2 when x is equal to 2. If I want to draw this function, it will look like this. F g of x is equal to x square is a parabola, right? But you have to, uh, the function is at this point, wherever x is equal to 2, the function doesn't exist, right? Because they have clearly mentioned f of g of, g of x equal to x square when x is not equal to 2. And when is x is equal to equal to 2, the function value is 2 itself. Okay, so this is the function value. So, clear? Is it clear till this? How I have drawn the figure of this um, question? Any doubt? Okay, Arjun, I'll explain once again. Okay, uh, the question the question given here is, um, or the function given here is g of x. The value of the g of x is x square when x is not equal to two. Okay, so not equal to two means x equal to one, one point five, zero, three, eight, nine, ten, minus ten, twenty, minus eleven, anything except x equal to 2 at all point of x the function will behave in this manner so what is the uh, x square x square is a parabola right so uh, let's say when x is equal to 0 g of x is 0 when x is equal to 1 g of x is 1 when x equal to 3 g of x is 9 when x equal to minus 1 g of x is 
1 when x is equal to minus 2 g of x is 4 when x is equal to uh, minus 3 g of x is um, 9 so on so ultimately what you are getting is parabola okay i hope uh, you understood this first function that is um, g of x equal to x square when x is not equal to 2 so at x equal to 2 what you have to do you have to draw, draw a hollow circle here because this hollow circle indicate that uh, this curve is coming like this okay okay and stopping at x equal to 2 a hollow circle and then it is moving again because we this function is not applicable for x equal to 2 so at x equal to 2 what is the function value it's a 2 right so that's why one black dot I have kept at bottom when x is equal to 2 g of x is also equal to 2. Are you following it now? Is it clear like how to draw the given function? Yeah. So now uh, if I say limit x tends to 2. Um, The limit x tends to 3 for example g of x what you will get 3 square equal to 9 correct this is what you will get limit x tends to 3 g of x function is so what will happen limit x tends to 3 x g of x is x square except 2 because our our point of interest is 3 3 is not equal to 2 so I can write it as 3 square and that is equal to 9. Correct? Is it clear till this? Like how to calculate the limit value if our point of interest is 3? If it is 4, 4 square. If it is 5, 5 square. If it is 6, 6 square we, you will get. Okay? But now, I am approaching point 2 now. Okay? Our focus is point 2. Uh, this point when x approaches 2. So, for example, if I say x, x limit x approaches 1.9, for example, g of x, what would it be? 1.9 whole square and it is 3.61. If I go more close to the 2 limit x tends to 1.999 g of x. So, this x is we are approaching x is equal to 2 right from the left hand side so it is 1.999 whole square it is 3.9996 correct and limit extends to 1.9999 it is 1.999999 whole square it is again 3.999997 it's something like this you will get so it's very very close to 4 but we know that limit x tends to 2 g of x is what is not equal to 4 right so in according to this what we can conclude is this value is very very close to 4 um so limit x tends to 2 from the negative side is 4 this is what we'll get, right? But in reality, this value is not equal to g of 2. Correct? g of 2 is 2 for this particular function. So, this, this thing is helping us to understand that limit is different, okay? Though we are calculating the limit, this limit concept we can help in order to define the continuity of the function okay so in this case if the value of the g of x at x is equal to 2 is same as the value of the limit approaching that point x from the left hand side or right hand side left hand side and right hand side then we say that function is continuous at that particular point are you following it so if let's say they they have given just they are not given this second line here that is g of x equal to 
x square for all values of x. Okay, for all values. If like this they are given, I would have drawn this kind of line, right? And um, in this case, the value of um, g of two is four itself, right? So I, I would have said this: if I approach the x equal to two from negative side or positive side, it is equal to the value of the function at that particular point. Hence, this is continuous. But in this case, in the given problem, that is not the case. If you approach the value two from the negative side, you are getting four. Okay, three point nine 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 eight means four, right? But the value of the function at that point is not four; it is two, which is given in the function. So that's why this particular function g of x is not continuous. And this limit concept is helping us to understand it. Okay, if you approach the value to that point, you are getting some value. And the value of the function at that particular point is something different. They are not matching with each other. It means the function is discontinuous at that particular point. I hope you are following it. Is it clear to you? Or, or uh, let me give you one more um, uh, theoretical question to. Make this concept more robust. Okay, I have one more question ready. Can you plot this graph? Um, can you plot this graph? F of x equal to x minus one divided by x minus one. Can you plot it? Someone will say that I will cancel x minus one, x minus one, and um, uh, f of x equal to one. F of x equal to one will be uh, this la this graph, right? This is f of x, and this is x, and this is one, like this. But that is not the case. When you have let's say x equal to one, x is a variable here, right? X can take value any value. X can take let's say zero, one, two, three, four, so on. So when x is equal to one, what will happen? This is zero by zero form. F of x will become zero by zero, right? And zero by zero is indeterminate form. You cannot find the value of it, right? Or basically, at x equal to one, this denominator becomes zero, and anything divided by zero is infinity. It's indeterminate, right? So this function is not defined when x is equal to one. So If you want to plot this figure, it will look like this: a horizontal line, then a hollow dot, uh, hollow circle at x equal to one, and then again horizontal line. Is it clear till this? Is it clear? You understood this figure first. Okay. Now, if you approach x is equal to two, x is equal to one. Sorry, in this case, from the negative side or positive side, what is your value? Okay. Um, if you approach limit x tends to one, f of x from the negative side or positive side, you end up with one. Okay, so limit extends to one. Let's say from um, positive side, so it is let's say one point zero 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 one. So it will be equal to one point zero 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 one minus one divided by one point zero 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 one minus one. So what we'll get is zero point zero 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 one divided by zero point zero 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 one. But we'll get cancel. You'll end up with one. So. If you approach one from the positive side, similarly, if you approach one from the negative side, you will end up with the value of the function as one. But at x is equal to one, function doesn't exist. We know because at x equal to one, it will become the indeterminate form, which is zero by zero. Okay. So limit x approaching one f of x is not equal to f of one. Do you agree in this case? This is what happening in this. Hence, this function is not continuous. 
If it is equal to one, then I would have said it is continuous at that point. Okay, so in this case, not. But if I take any other point, for example, minus one, limit x tends to minus one, f of x is what is one you will get, and that is equal to f of minus one. f of minus is one is also one because minus two divided by minus two is one. So in the, at at point minus one, I can say. It extends to minus one f of x equal to f of minus one, but at point x equal to one, I cannot say this. Do you agree? Are you following the difference in this? Hello, are you getting the difference in uh, in the situation at x equal to one and x equal to minus one? Yes. So if you take any other point x equal to two, also limit x tends to two. f of x equal to f of 2 you will get okay no doubt about it so all other points at all other points function is continuous except x equal to 1 okay so i hope now uh, you got the understanding of how limit is helping us to calculate or to explain the continuity of the function okay and in future we will study how it will it will help us to calculate the differentiability of the function So as of now, our focus is to calculate. We know the value of the function at that particular point. So our focus is now how to calculate the limit is our focus now. If the value of the limit at that uh, approaching that point is known, and the value of the function at that point is known, then comparing that value, if they are same, we can say. the function is continuous if they are different we'll say function is a discontinuous okay so in order to define the continuity we have to first able to calculate the limit value okay and hence we'll start now calculating the limit um, from this point so these two questions are just to give you a glimpse how um limit concept is used to define the continuity of the function okay and um, just to give you an importance of limits okay now i hope it is clear and uh, we can go towards now mathematical part now to understand uh, to find the limit basically and uh, um, to perform the test of existence of limit okay so as i said before test of existence of limit means you have to check whether left hand limit is equal to right hand limit or not okay and what it will give you it will give you whether the function exists at that particular point or not okay function exists at point x is equal to a if left hand limit at a and right hand limit at a is same okay this is one point so this is a test of existence of limit um yeah let's solve some question limit x tends to 0 2 raised to the power 1 by x okay Check the existence of limit at x equal to a. At x is equal to, or basically check the existence of limit. Okay. So from this question, what you can understand? X tends to a. Value of a is zero here. Correct. This is what we can understand. And what is the value of the function? Two raised to the power one by x. This is also given to you. you have to check the existence of limit meaning you have to check left hand limit and right hand limit you have to compare them okay calculate left hand limit calculate right hand limit and check whether they are same or not
left hand limit is zero right hand limit is not defined yes correct so they are not same okay um how the left hand limit will look like limit x tends to zero from the negative side two raised to the power one by x okay so um the other way of writing it is uh, let's say limit so our focus is x is equal to zero right so assume any value which is just on the left hand side of the x will be so this is x a okay let's say this is um, x is equal to a for example any value which is very very close to the a x equal to a from the left hand side will be a minus h do you agree is a minus any value which is on just on the right hand side is let's say a plus h so in short i can say that this h is very very small for example so can we say limit rather than saying limit x tends to zero to rest to the power one of an x we can also write limit h tends to zero okay f of a minus h okay this is same again and now um a is zero in this case, so limit h tends to zero, f of minus h. So limit h tends to zero, two raised to the power minus one upon h. Right? Two raised to the power minus one upon h. So and h is put the value h equal to zero. So it is a two raised to the power minus infinity. So it is one upon two raised to the power infinity which is zero. Why? Because it's one upon infinity and one upon infinity is zero. Okay. In the similar way, right hand limit is limit extends to zero from positive side. Mm. Okay. So I can write it as uh, two raised to the power one by X. I can write it as limit h tends to zero f of a plus h right we can write it like this so it is limit h tends to zero two raised to the power one upon a zero so um, f of h so it is two raised to the power one upon h limit x tends to zero Okay, um, so it is two raised to the power one upon infinity, one upon zero, sorry. So it means two raised to the power infinity, which is infinity. Okay, I hope it's clear. So um, right hand limit and left hand limit is not matching. So for limit doesn't exist, you can say, or function doesn't exist at that point. Clear? Okay, let me give you another question. Little bit tricky question, okay? Um, because it comes with a mod function. Limit x tends to zero mod of x by x. Okay. Check whether left hand limit, compare left hand limit and right hand limit. Okay, this is just to um give you understanding of the limit okay this type of question they will not ask in gate uh, but questions based on this they will definitely ask so mod functions you should know how to deal with them so that's why i'm explaining this Calculate left hand limit, right hand limit, and tell me the answer.
Because if you plot this function, how it, so if you feel any difficulty, just plot the function. How you, if you plot the function, how it will look like? I hope you should get it something like this. Correct? Check it. See, in case of limit continuity and differentiability problems, if you are finding anything difficult, just plot it. You will clearly get idea. So. Um, it means at x is equal to zero, the function is like don't have any value. Okay. Um, okay, because both are hollow circles here, like this it will look. Let's try to check whether it is same or not mathematically. Left hand limit. Limit x tends to zero. Okay. Um, f of x will be equal to limit h tends to 0 f of a minus h a is 0 in this case so limit h tends to 0 f of minus h similarly right hand limit would be limit h tends to 0 f of plus h directly i'm writing okay now so f of minus h would be equal to mod of minus h divided by minus h and f of plus h will be equal to mod of plus h divided by plus h mod of minus h is minus one uh, plus one divided by minus h will be minus h so it will be minus one you will get correct which is h by minus h here it is h by h okay mod of h is h only so ultimately you will get one so for, if you approach the point x equal to zero from right hand side, always you will get one answer. And that is what our graph shows. But if you approach the point x equal to zero from left hand side, you will get minus one value. And that is what our graph also so, shows. Okay. So they are not same. Left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. Hence, function doesn't exist or limit doesn't exist at that point. So as I said, it's not that difficult. You just have to draw the graph. Okay. Is it clear? Can I proceed to the next slide? So in the same way, in the previous question, if you want to draw the graph of this 2 raised to the power 1 by x, how it will look like? What was our question? The question was limit x tends to 0, 2 raised to the power 1 by x. So if you plot this graph, how it will look like is this. Follow circle. And then the line assumed to it. Like this it will look. Plot it online uh, if you find it difficult. Uh, this is this will also tell you like um, even if you know how to plot the curve it will the function will um, so even if you uh, plot the curve that will give you idea whether the limit exists or not whether the function is continuous or not whether the function is differentiable or not okay so i will always plot uh, draw these diagrams um, just to make you feel comfortable with what we are learning okay so is it clear why this is uh, the, why this function doesn't exist here because the at x is equal to 0 you don't have any point because here it's a hollow circle and this line is going asymptotic to it it will touch at infinity so that is why at x is equal to 0 function doesn't exist so your left hand limit is not equal to right hand limit or in short limit do, does not exist okay and the same thing we have studied in the this second question also which is mod function
इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी वन just to start a new topic um, uh, which is indeterminate forms to share you one background i'll give one question limit x tends to 0 x sin of 1 upon x can you solve this question solve this question so left hand limit in this case is limit h tends to 0 f of a minus h which is f of um minus h okay the right hand limit a is 0 that's why directly i'm writing limit h tends to 0 f of plus h okay so how it will look like um minus h sin of minus 1 upon h and here what it will look like h sin of 1 upon h okay um so minus h as it is sin of minus x is minus sin x so it's a minus sin of 1 by h h Sine of one by h, so minus minus will become plus. So h sine of one by h, and here again h sine of one by h. So in short, your left hand limit is equal to right hand limit. Okay, uh, so limit exists. But if I ask you to calculate the value of limit, can you calculate? can you calculate the value of the limit left hand limit and right hand limit you have written but can you calculate it limit h tends to 0 i forgot to write okay we have same term on the both the side but to which value this um, function is uh, reaching if you solve it um let me just go to the next slide limit h tends to 0 sin of 1 upon h h sin of 1 upon h so i can write it as sin of 1 upon h by 1 upon h if i put h is equal to 0 in this now it is sin of 1 upon Zero divided by one upon zero. Okay, sine of one upon zero will be sine of infinity divided by sine of um, divided by one by zero is what? Infinity, right? Okay. So um, it is something like a. um not straight forward right so sin of infinity is what sin of infinity always line in between minus 1 to 1 any value between minus 1 to 1 divided by infinity will all give you the zero value okay um satish the value is not 1 you should get zero value here limit x tends to 0 sin of x by x is 1 okay that is different and what we are studying here is different okay we are saying um this is what we are studying here is limit 
extends to h sine of one upon so extend to x let's say if you want um extends to zero sine of one upon x divided by one upon x you are studying okay this is something different than the standard rule which you know okay that's why answer is not one satish so we know sine function will always end up with a either minus one to plus one value any value right divided by infinity means anything any uh, number divided by infinity is zero correct that's why answer is zero in this case is it clear um if in case let's say if we get a zero by zero form while solving this what we got let's say a by infinity form or a by um zero form like this if you get you can clearly say a by infinity means zero a by zero means infinity or any um correct value if you other get that is also fine so some some limits are determined uh, determinate or we can easily find the answer but some are indeterminate let's say while solving it you will get the limit form in the zero by zero form or infinity by infinity form in such cases how we should deal with the problem that is what we are going to study in the upcoming slides okay before we proceed is this question clear to you all is this question clear the value of limit is zero and limit exist uh, since the left hand limit and right hand limit is same hello you can respond if it is clear if it is not clear tell me i will explain again okay okay good now write down heading indeterminate forms Okay. Write down heading indeterminate forms. So, as I said, the forms which are like this 0 by 0, where your numerator and denominator are 0, infinity by infinity, 0 multiplied by infinity, or um, let's say um, infinity raised to the power infinity, 1 raised to the power infinity, or um, infinity minus infinity these are like some cases which are indeterminate okay so in such type of question how should we solve the limit that is the concern here okay so we will start with all this um, um, types of indeterminate form first type is type one or you can say is zero by zero form okay let me give you how this form looks like. So limit extends to zero sine of x divided by x. If you want to solve, if you directly put the value of x equal to zero, what will happen? Sine of zero divided by zero. Sine zero is zero and x is zero. So this is zero by zero form. We don't know the answer for it, right? Zero by zero is what? We don't know whether it's a zero, infinity, one, it can be anything. So we don't know. So how to solve this? It's an indeterminate form. So how to solve this is uh, the procedure that is the L hospital rule we have to apply in this case. And that is what we are going to study. Okay. So procedure for this type of um, indeterminate form 0 by 0 is. Let's say if you have limit extends to a f of x divided by g of x. And uh, when you put x equal to a, you are getting 0 by 0. What you have to do is apply l hospital rule l hospital rule okay if you apply l hospital rule what will happen limit extends to a extends to a f dash of x divided by g dash of x 
applying L hospital rule means applying derivative on numerator and denominator separately and putting the limits if you get the answer that's well and good if you don't get if you're still getting zero by zero form again apply L hospital rule okay so what you will get limit x tends to a f double dash of x divided by g double dash of x and solve you may get the answer okay if you don't get if you still get zero by zero form continue this procedure of applying L hospital rule until you get the limit continue until you get the limit okay I hope you understood this um, point. Let's take the same question which we are, we were um, studying. For example, limit x tends to zero sine x by x. So zero by zero you are getting if you put x equal to zero. So as as I said, apply a hospital rule. So differentiation of the numerator is sine x is cos of x. Differentiation of x is one. So limit x tends to zero cos of x divided by one. Put x equal to zero, cos of zero divided by one. Cos zero is one. One by one is one. That's all. So answer is one here. So limit x tends to zero sin x by x is one. In short. Okay. So you might have studied this property many times, but this is how it is proved. Okay. Keep this in mind. This this property is very important. It will help you to solve the complex problem. You don't have to repeat it, uh, repeat the solution of this property. Okay. You can directly put limit x tends to 0 sin x by x is 1. That's all. Clear? Is it clear to you the procedure for uh, the first indeterminate from 0 by 0? Can I give you some more questions on this? Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you some questions. Solve them quickly. Limit x tends to 0, sin of ax by x. Next question, limit x tends to 0, sin of ax by sin of bx. Solve this very simple questions. What is the solution of this first question? Sine of ax by x. Apply L hospital rule because if you put 0, sine 0 is 0, z x is 0, so it's a 0 by 0 form. Okay. So uh, apply L hospital rule, limit x tends to 0, differentiation of sine of ax is a cos of ax divided by x. a cos of co divided by 1, sorry, a cos of 0, which is cos 0 is 1, so a into 1 is a. Similarly here, if you put x equal to 0, it's a 0 by 0 form. So apply L hospital rule. Limit x tends to 0. A cos of Ax divided by B, sin, no, B cos of Bx. Okay. Um, so if you put A cos of 0 divided by B cos of 0. Cos 0 is 1. So A by B is the answer. Clear? Yeah, let me give you another question. Mm, limit x tends to 0. Tan of x by x. Solve this. Limit x tends to 0 tan x by x. Yes, answer is 1 again. Because if put 0, tan 0 is what? Tan 0 is uh, 0. So again, 0 by 0 form. So apply L hospital rule. Limit x tends to 0. Differentiation of tan x is 
um or basically you can write tan x into like this sin x by x into 1 by cos x can you write it like this and you know limit x tends to 0 sin x by x is 1 limit x tends to 0 sin x by x into limit x tends to 0 1 upon cos of x so this value is 1 you know and this value is also 1 because if you put um, it's 1 upon cos 0 cos 0 is 1 so answer is 1 okay so you remember this property also limit x tends to 0 tan of x divided by x equal to 1 okay remember this property okay let me give you another question limit x tends to 0 1 minus cos of x divided by x square Solve this question and tell me the answer. One by two yes correct why because if you put zero what will happen one minus one divided by zero so it's zero by zero pop so you have to apply a hospital rule differentiation of uh, one minus cos x is one differentiation of one is zero differentiation of cos x is minus sin x so minus minus will become plus differentiation of x square is 2x if you put 0 now, sin 0 is 0, divided by 2 into 0 is 0. Again, 0 by 0 form. So you have to again apply a hospital rule. Limit x tends to 0, cos of x divided by 2. And then what will happen? It is cos of 0 divided by 2, cos 0 is 1, 1 by 2. Okay? That's why answer is 1 by 2 here. Okay. I'll... Um, We'll solve one more question. Um, limit x tends to 0. Tan x minus sine of x divided by x cube. Tint here is whenever you come across a problem in which apart from sine and cosine terms are there, like tan, cot, sec, cosec, better to convert them into sine and cosine. Then things will be simpler. Okay. So use that hint in order to solve this question convert this sine into sine by cos okay. and uh, one more question i'll give limit x tends to zero root of x plus three minus root three divided by x here hint is whenever you have under root terms do the rationalization Okay, you can write these notes if you want. Do rationalization whenever you have roots. Here, convert into sine and cosine. Whenever you have other trigonometric functions, convert into sine and cosine so this remember these two hints um, very helpful for you to solve the questions and uh, later i'll give you some homework questions
What is the solution for the first question? Limit x tends to zero. Tan of x can be written as sine of x divided by cos of x minus sine of x divided by x cube. So it is sine x minus sine of x cos of x divided by x cube cos of x. Okay. Um, so if I take uh, if I take here sine of x in common divided by so what will happen in bracket we'll have one minus cos of x divided by cos of x into x cube right so sine x by cos x I can write tan x and this x cube I can write x into x square we know limit x tends to zero tan of x by x is one so that part is gone now what is what is the remaining one minus cos x by x square and we have solved just now one minus cos x by x square its value is one by two so ultimately the answer is one into one by two which is one by two is it clear about the second question do the rationalization whenever you do the rationalization you multiply with the conjugate pair so root 3 root x plus 3 plus root 3 divided by root x plus 3 plus root 3 so here minus is there in between so you have to multiply the plus numerator and denominator what will you end up with x plus 3 minus 3 divided by x into under root of x plus 3 plus root 3 so solve it 3 3 will get cancelled limit x tends to 0 so it is it will become um, 0 by 0 form so apply L hospital rule limit x tends to 0 differentiation of x is 1 sorry no um, in numerator what will happen x will remain no need to apply L hospital rule in denominator what what will remain is x into root of x plus 3 plus root 3 okay x x will get cancelled directly so limit x tends to 0 1 divided by root of x plus 3 plus root 3 okay so if you put 0 1 upon root 3 plus root 3 is 2 root 3 so it is 1 upon 2 root 3 is the answer why we are doing it like this because if you put 0 here root 3 root 3 minus root 3 is 0 divided by 0 so it's a 0 by 0 form was there in the same way in the first question also 0 by 0 form was there because tan 0 is 0 sin 0 is 0 0 by 0 is form is there so in order to solve this question directly rather than directly applying a hospital rule these two hints i am giving to you okay whenever you have function other than sine and cosine convert into sine and cosine whenever you have um, let's say under root terms do rationalization okay based on these two questions i'll give you two homework questions um, which uh, you will be able to solve okay can i proceed to the next line are you done with this slide okay take home more questions limit extends to zero root of one plus x minus root of one minus x divided by x okay if you see here put zero root one minus root one divided by zero it's a zero by zero form okay rather than applying a hospital rule directly you can use the hint which i have given you you will be able to solve okay answer is one in this case check your answer and then last question is limit extends to zero 
tan square x minus sin square x divided by x raised to the power 4. Okay, here we have tan term. Use the hint which I have given to you. If you directly put the limit x equal to 0, what will happen? It's 0 by 0 form. Okay, so use the hint and solve it. Here also, answer is 1. Okay, so use these two homework questions um, to revise uh, the concept which we have studied now. Okay. In the upcoming sessions, uh, we will be studying the um, uh, other types of indeterminate form that is the infinity by infinity, infinity minus infinity, uh, infinity rest per infinity and so on. Okay. Is it clear till this? If you have any doubt, feel free to ask. If no doubts, then we'll end our session here. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, thank you all for um, joining this session. Um, let's meet again next week. Um, we'll continue this calculus topic. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Have a good Sunday.